Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, training session in What's in the Meter project. Today I'm going to be uh, introducing uh, qualitative research, talking a little bit about uh, what we mean by it and the different types of methods used uh, when conducting qualitative research. And this is important given uh, the, um, the, the research that we're going to be doing in, in What's in the Meter is mainly uh, qualitative. A little bit about myself to begin with. My name is Dana Amihanem. Uh, I'm a research fellow at Teesside University in the northeast of England. And uh, I have a background in social sciences and I've been working for many years now uh, on uh, looking at energy uh, in society, how people uh, use it, how people adopt it and the impact it's had. Uh, so my, my role in What's in the Meter uh, is to lead Work Package 2, uh, which is a critical assessment of electricity and water metering practices uh, and the impact they have. Uh, so what we want to uh, learn from this session today is to be able to understand uh, generally what we mean by qualitative research, uh, to understand the differences between qualitative and quantitative research, uh, and to um, uh, discuss briefly the different methods that we can use uh, when, when conducting and using qualitative research in our work. So the landscape of uh, research is um, very broad and complex. Um, as we've already mentioned, we have quantitative methods that we use where um, we uh, build a hypothesis and test it and, and collect and generate data on a large scale. And, um, and, and that tends to be um, a, a very um, a dominant way of doing things, um, particularly in traditional social sciences. We also uh, use qualitative methods, uh, and, um, and, and this is what we're going to be talking about today in a little bit more detail, um, and, and how we use it alongside other um, approaches. So what do we mean by qualitative research? Uh, firstly, uh, we can think about it as a technique for data collection and analysis. So in the same way that researchers might uh, collect quantitative research, we go about and do it in a different way. However, uh, we can also qualitative research also refers to a wider framework and approach of understanding reality and, and reporting on it. And so the idea of how do we generate knowledge and theories. And the uh, main distinction is the inductive approach where the um, production of knowledge and the, the conceptualization and the building of theories happens by looking at the, um, at the situation in itself. So the, the theories and concepts emerge uh, from the data uh, rather than otherwise. And an important principle uh, that we, I will also go into detail with is the idea of focusing on the human experience, which is uh, crucial uh, in qualitative research. So uh, recognizing uh, the complexity in human realities, so uh, what people experience and what they understand. Um, and, um, and so the other and the way the best way to do it is to interact uh, with people as much as possible uh, and to even spend time with them uh, and, uh, and, and begin to um, understand and recognize uh, their realities uh, in an in-depth way. So uh, the advantages of qualitative research by focusing on the human experience is that we gain a better understanding, a more in-depth understanding, uh, if you like, uh, of a, a wide problem at a deep uh, level. And in doing so, we, we um, are uh, the privilege is that we understand the multiple views and perspectives pertaining to a particular uh, phenomena or, uh, as we say, per perhaps a social problem. So we give a voice to a diversity of people, not just uh, people who might have uh, the power to influence and dominate a particular uh, discourse or discussion. And when we do so, we're not just looking at understandings, but also different meanings and values attributed to uh, phenomena. This can be technologies or they can be uh, policies. So whatever it is that we're doing research on, whether we are exploring how a particular metering technology um, affects access and uh, notions and meanings of uh, needs such as water or electricity, or whether we're looking at a particular policy adopted by a government uh, that is af affecting people in a particular area. Um, so being able to explore all these different meanings and values is one of the advantages of using qualitative research. 
the outputs of qualitative research um, are uh, tend to be descriptive in nature uh, and narrative. So we go in depth, we describe, often described as often referred to as thick description. Uh, how people are living through particular events and situations, it could be extreme weather events, natural disasters, or particular changes and uh, situations that they might find themselves in, uh, as I said earlier, uh, an implementation of a particular technological program uh, or a particular policy. And uh, my colleague, Dr. Gillian Waller, will be covering um, how we analyze uh, the data. So I won't be going into that here, but um, yeah, she will be explaining a lot more about the themes, taxonomies and models. So uh, importantly, we, we uh, in order to explain uh, qualitative data, uh, qualitative da um, research, excuse me, um, it's important to explain what it is not about. And so the best way is to compare it to the common quantitative approach. Um, and importantly, here we are recognizing that uh, when we conduct qualitative research, we are not seeking to measure. Uh, we are looking for meanings and experiences. And so the, the approach is different. It's inductive and not deductive, as in quanti. Uh, and uh, the goals are to explore the meanings and processes and, and not to generalize and discover relationships and, uh, and, and reach conclusions or test hypotheses. Similarly, um, we have differences in um, the type of data that we get. So we're not getting numbers. And um, instead, we're getting uh, personal narratives. And uh, there are other technical differences. So the sampling in quantitative research is probabilistic sampling, whereas um, in qualitative research, we call it purposeful sampling. So we, uh, we sample uh, depending on our research question, our research interests, and what, we, what it is that we want to find out. Uh, an analysis, quantitative um, analysis, uses statistical tests and models. Uh, but as I said, uh, for us, we interpret the data using uh, specific techniques that um, Dr. Waller will be talking about in more detail. Um, the fundamentals of qualitative research uh, pertain around uh, naturalistic inquiry and understanding the context. So what we mean by naturalistic inquiry is that there is no single definitive answer to a problem. Uh, likewise, there's no definitive um, understanding or um, the definition of, of a particular phenomenon. And the um, themes and narratives uh, are grounded in the field work conducted uh, using different qualitative methods. And these methods in themselves uh, impact how we shape our understanding of a particular. Just to say that we uh, recognize that, uh, that the notion of a pure unbiased research is, is not the, the, the goal in qualitative research. And which brings me to my second point, which is the, the importance of context. So uh, data is produced within a context by the research participants who are located and come from specific contexts, which enriches our understanding um, uh, and our results. Um, so this is, um, this is to say that the results of our research is both a product of the people taking part in the research, the people that we are interviewing or they are participating in the focus groups, as well as the researchers and how they are conducting it using what methods. And so this idea of a bias-free or uncontaminated data uh, does not always, um, is not the goal and is not the, the, the purpose that we had for, had to. Finally, to talk about the different uh, research methods, um, typically uh, they are, uh, there are four main types and then of course uh, you will find other new um, methods or methods that are a combination of any of those, but typically mostly it's interviews. Uh, and these are, um, these are uh, great ways of exploring individual experiences or um, individual experiences of, say, households or people. Um, and they're a great, great way of obtaining um, uh, rich detail about uh, perceptions, practices, uh, routines. Uh, an example of that would be, for example, um, finding out about uh, child rearing practices. Focus groups are uh, a way of getting uh, individuals from different groups to um, come together and discuss a particular topic. 
Um, and these are great ways of understanding how, for example, social norms and shared experiences uh, come to be. Um, for example, the views on the performance of political parties uh, are typically uh, researched using focus groups. Uh, observations is uh, a great way of um, exploring how communities interact, customs and traditions, uh, and typically involve people um, living in or um, spending quite a lot, long time interacting with members of a particular community um, and uh, in their natural setting and uh, observing uh, what it is that they do and the various meanings uh, and practices surrounding those things. And finally, uh, textual analysis is uh, nowadays both textual and visual. So that involves um, understanding and um, um, analyzing text, uh, visual material, including videos and pictures. Um, and these are uh, methods um, suitable uh, for um, anything from historical research to uh, current research pertaining to how particular depictions are produced, for example, um, how topics are represented in the media, uh, and so on. So uh, before I move on to uh, the next session, uh, which will be focused more on the interview method, uh, I will revise uh, what we, it is that we did today. So hopefully by now we have a broad understanding of what we mean by qualitative research. Um, uh, the principles of it, the fundamentals, the importance of context, uh, the fact that it is a form of inductive research. Uh, we've been able to identify how it's different from quantitative research in terms of sampling, data analysis, uh, goal and approach, and outline the different methods used in qualitative research, uh, typically interviews, focus groups, uh, textual and observation methods. Uh, these are some of the readings that I recommend um, could be helpful. There's uh, also a lot more and we can um, go into a lot more details uh, in our discussions in the future. And as I said, in the next session, I will talk a little bit more in detail about the interview method and how to prepare um, for interviews when uh, using them in our qualitative research. Thank you very much.